Feedback. Feedback. Hi, this is Theo Groton. And I am the BDM Pina. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for Feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. Encourage others to tune in each Monday on Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, watch WHPR TV Network anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback. 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 With you. Happy Monday to everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to Feedback. My name is Theo Broden, co-founder of Hood Research, and my co-host. Yes, everybody. How are we doing this morning? Mark Cummings, Hood Research. And we are happy to be here. Yes, indeed. Snowy weather and all. If you have to go out today, please be careful and dress appropriately, because in addition to the snow... It's cold, it's cold out temperatures. There. <laughs> yes, Absolutely. Yes. Oh, today is January the what? 30, today the 30th. 30, One more 30th, day. Oh, and, we're, and we're moving towards the next month, February, Black History Month, Valentine's Month, mm -hmm. uh, and, and all that goes within that. That's right. Mm -hmm. We are. Um, Going to uh, say good good morning to us, uh, those of those of you who are tuning in uh, regularly. I want to say good morning to uh, Ken and uh, to Dwayne and Katrina at Gladys, and to um, let's see uh, Clementine, and uh, there's so many of you who tune in, Carl and 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 to. Um, Ron, and who you want to say good morning to? I'm up here digging in my bag there. You know the whole crew. I love all of y'all out there. My HBCU folks, Brother oh. Frank Surreal, Chef Jeff Tony out there. We got to get him on the show. Mm -hmm. He said he's going to try to get in here next month. Oh, and that uh, good. everybody doing great things out there. K oh. Rob, the whole bunch. Eric Scott, the barber, mm -hmm. Master Barber, the whole crew. It's going to be oh. a Great show today. All right. Sounds good. You know, um, it was uh, sad uh, to mention that uh, this young man, uh, Mr. Nichols, was uh, beaten to death by uh, black police officers. And, of course, they said there was one white officer in there who was uh, egging them on, if you will. My goodness. And uh, that several of them are members of a fraternity. Now that was disappointing as well because I, th I thought that they were about uh, integrity and, and working uh, for the good of the community, not for the destruction of the community. So this is, you know, and, and when you, as you say that, Mr. Bro, I think people must understand when you're in groups, when you work for companies, you don't just represent yourself anymore. Mm -hmm. You are a representative of the group that you are part of. Just like myself, I represent Hood Research. Mm -hmm. So I just can't be out there doing anything foolish. Because mm -hmm. then, you know, they'll say, you know, that guy coming, he in Hood Research. They'll just let anybody in that group. <laughs> no, you, 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 only the best. People yeah, that care. And I mean... We all know that the, mem the guys were members of Omega Sci-Fi. They was Q-Dogs. And, you know, the Q-Dogs is known for bouncing around and barking and all of that great stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, these were older gentlemen. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to set an example for the younger guys. Yeah. And it just doesn't look good all the way around mm -hmm. for that organization. I think they're going to have to come out and do some damage control. Right. And then I think they should um, write and, and encourage the uh, Senate to pass the George Floyd bill in addition to the voting rights bill. And uh, I know when we had the election uh, this past November, I would uh, bring that point out mm -hmm. because the fraternities and sororities had done s such a yeoman's job in making sure that our young people got an opportunity to see uh, Wakanda, you know, um, and uh, that movie was very, very good, very positive. And they went all out, and everybody heard about it. But when elections come around, I don't really hear 
that the sorority or the fraternity is doing anything. And they could do a lot to encourage the community and those connected with their members to participate in an election that would mean a lot for the black community. But if they're not making that point, then other people don't know why they need to go out and vote. Mm -hmm. You know? So, anyway. And, and you know, and you, then you use that capital by having it's so many people that have done great things that come from these fraternities and sorority. They were all started mainly at black colleges, most of them at Howard University. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you know, you know, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., we just talk about it. his birthday celebrated this month, January 15th, celebrated on 16th. This We had to show Dr. Martin Luther King. He's an alpha man, mm -hmm. Alpha Phi Alpha. That was one of the first fraternities for black folk, one of the first Greek organizations, as they call them. Mm -hmm. You have, you got the vice president of the United States of America. She's an AKA, Alpha Kappa Alpha. Mm. You know, the ski wheat and the ivy and all of that stuff, pink and green. They could be doing more now mm -hmm. because you have that visibility. Mm -hmm. And I don't think she's used the cachet of her office the way she should. Mm -hmm. I mean, we two years in and you barely ever hear about what's going on with that sister. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. We got to take advantage, folks. She speaks here and there every now and then. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know, I think that uh, Larissa should have a, a new saying. Um, you know, they say people would do better if they knew better. Indeed. I think we should say people would do better if they cared. Hmm. Yes, indeed. Uh, people do better when they care. How about that? And you, know. and you know we got those t-shirts respect yourself shirts oh absolutely <laughs> so absolutely. join hood research and get your respect yourself t-shirt mm -hmm. and and also you know uh there's been talk about um returning to the family our culture was very uh deep into family mm -hmm. and now i i hear uh some of the uh young people in our community saying, well, I don't want to get married. Why should I get married, you know? And uh, then, then you wonder, well, if they have a child, because that's just what they want to do, well, what, what about the father of the child? Oh, don't boy. you want the child to have a relationship with the father? Oh, boy. So there's so much that is uh, uh, going on. That, that is changing the culture that we have. And then with, with the uh, new rap lyrics, I'm, I'm hearing now that, you know, the lyrics that I talked about where the rappers say, go out and kill somebody, go spray the block. I'm hearing that that's kind of dying down. And uh, I certainly hope so. Well, I'm sure it's in no small part to Hood Research writing that letter to the uh, the Grammys and letting them know <laughs> yeah. you're not gonna be uh, aggrandizing that foolishness, you know. Yeah. It's like, look, this we know who this music is focused at, mm -hmm. and uh, we 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 are not with that. Right. Mm -hmm. We also send a letter to the National NAACP right. because they give out awards also, and it, and it was just going deeper and deeper in the gutter, you know. And I'm like, can't they hear? Can't they? understand, can't they analyze, can't they comprehend, you know, uh, one was beginning to wonder what is going through their minds. You, you know, they talk, we talk about uh, meeting people where they are, mm -hmm. but when you meet them and you stay with them where they are, <laughs> that's a problem. <laughs> that is definitely a problem. Oh, so, uh, anyway. I'm very happy that uh, uh, the governor has signed a bill. I believe it's Bill 5091. Okay. And uh, the bill says that our high school seniors will not graduate unless they have financial literacy classes and pass the test. So um, knowing that uh, the members of our community need some financial literacy instruction, learning and sharing, that this would be a good thing, passing it on down to the 
school children. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe they can teach their parents a little financial literacy. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, right, absolutely. Because they didn't get that in school. Uh-huh. And, I mean, uh-huh. and, you know, I understand, you know, it's it's tough. When you ain't making enough money mm-hmm. to pay the bills, you like financial literacy. Man, what is that? Mm-hmm. I need more cash. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it's understandable. Yeah. And I think we don't talk about the necessity for marriage because of that. You know, I had just posted on my site, they did a piece about, you can't afford not to be married now. Mm. And, it, and this was a, uh, this was um, Rocket Mortgage funded this. Mm. And they are letting these young folks know, you can't afford not to be coupled with somebody now. Because mm. it's too expensive to be single. Mm. And I mean, we got to understand, you know. Mm. You ain't going, what is this, looking for the perfect mate and all of this stuff? Find somebody you care about mm-hmm. and then start a family. Mm-hmm. And then move forward because ain't nothing yeah. perfect. I mean, we act like back in the day all these folks was perfect. I mean, mm-hmm. I look back at my grandparents, you know, it was like they just got together and did what they're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. It wasn't about no glamour or, you know, who had the most money and all this silly yeah. stuff. You know, uh-huh. when, then, is, when did this, when did all that here? start? You know, you wonder because other um, ethnic groups uh, pick the uh, spouse. Yes, yes, some of them do, right? Yeah. 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 So I, I don't know how long that lasts, but it seems that, that it does because according to uh, statistics, mm-hmm. they have a high rate of uh, retention when it relates to, well, marriage. But in general, in the United States, mm. <laughs> the percentage of divorce is, is very high. It's ridiculous. So that's, yeah, that's, that's kind of a sad situation, you know. And, and it's about families. I mean, I knew an a Indian guy, mm-hmm. Hindu, mm-hmm. and you're right. Uh, the, the family chose his wife. Mm. And, you know, the, the women understand the role, and, you know, they understand it, you know. Mm. Their parents have agreed to this. So really what it becomes is a union of two families. And really that's what marriage is. I think we forget that. We think it's two people, single folks, individuals. Mm -hmm. No, it's a coming together of two families. Mm -hmm. This is why the bloodlines are so important. And I think this is where we kind of lost this idea of the man being the head. Mm -hmm. The man is the what? He starts the bloodline. You know, the bloodline doesn't come through the female. Mm-hmm. It comes through the man because right. he has the seed. Right. And uh, he plants the seed in the woman, of course. So when you start breaking up the bloodline, that's why the woman takes on the name of the man. Mm-hmm. And the children are supposed to take the name of the man. Mm-hmm. So when you start getting these families where the woman keep, the, keep her name on the child and then the next thing you know, she got a another baby by a different man and you got a household of kids with all these different last names hmm. you destroy the bloodlines hmm. and now is it's just a dis, dis, destructive hmm. and i know the sisters out there they don't like hearing this and they like well it ain't our fault the men ain't do no good and the men ain't right this is why we got to understand racism i wasn't gonna wear my are you tired of racism today miss broden hmm. but i got my guy first shirt on folks because uh we're going to have uh, Bishop Russell Schaller down. Uh, he mm-hmm. started a chapter with the Lions Club, Greater St. John mm-hmm. Lions Club over on the east side. He should be down later on today. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's doing good work in the community. And um, as a matter of fact, folks, Ms. Broughton and myself, yeah. we are both Lions. Mm-hmm. Now, if y'all not familiar with the Lions Club, when you come into any new locale you'll see the sign up there and there'll be the rotary club the veterans and then you'll see that l in the purple and gold that's the lions club it's an international organization it's the largest business organization in the entire world Mm. and we're a part of it because we're a part of the first african-american chapter created in the united states the detroit renaissance lions clubs over on the west side and they just started that chapter on the east side is an extension of the Detroit Renaissance Lions Club. So, hey, we're growing. Mm-hmm. And you want to get involved. And uh, that's really what it's about. When people get involved, we can start changing this dynamic, Ms. Broden. Right. Slowly but surely. Oh, yeah. I, I agree with that, you know. And um, 
You had mentioned something uh, a little while ago about carrying on the name, yes, the legacy, exactly. and, and and all. And um, I, I don't <clears throat> think they have this class anymore. But in the school system, they had a child development class, mm, okay. uh, which is to help young people under, understand, you know, about. Uh, and you're saying that the father is the one who uh, has a seed and carries on the uh, legacy of his line. And uh, in, in the class, uh, uh, child development class, the uh, students were taught some of that, mm -hmm. you know. And, and there have been other uh, classes that have been beneficial in helping the students understand what's going on, understanding how their responsibility has to be a part of this, mm -hmm. you know. Because when you, you have all these, I don't know, separate children and fathers, and there's some singer or rapper or somebody who has 27 kids by different women. It, it's quite a yeah, few of them out there that's I, got a few kids. I know... Uh, this guy Future, he's got quite a few children, yeah. and of course, um, what's the guy's name that hosts one of them shows? Nick Cannon. Uh -huh. Nick Cannon's got eleven children, oh, and, <laughs> and it's after, by different it's women. It's by a lot of different women, and after a while, it becomes somewhat of a. It's like a, a running joke, you know. It's like, yeah, well, you know, the ladies like them, and nobody. I, f I really feel the women I really going to have to start understanding. You know these guys got other children. Mm -hmm. Why are you going to have children with a guy that already got 10 kids? Oh, God. You know that's going to take away from him having any time with your child. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be able to pay the child support that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And then you're just going to be angry. And, mm -hmm. then it, and then it just it just snowballs. Yeah, it's not <laughs> taking it out on the child. And the child... Didn't have anything to do with this. It, you it, know? it, it gets really messy. You know, Yana Van Zandt had a show about I, seven years ago, and I did a piece on it when I had a YouTube show. And she had a guy on who had 34 children. Mm -hmm. Now, this wasn't like some slug type of guy. He was in the music industry. He was a producer. Mm -hmm. 17 different baby mothers, 34 children. Oh, and a lot of the women knew each other. But. And, of course, he has some scattered all over the country. But a lot of them knew each other. And he was in Atlanta. And a lot of the women in Atlanta knew the guy. Mm -hmm. And she had his parents on. And yeah. the mother and the father, of course, they had broke up. It was, mm -hmm. I think they were from New York. Mm -hmm. And um, the mother was saying, you know, he never respected her. And I guess my man said that the kid had stole a gun from him when he was younger, like 16, when stole one of his guns, and that's when he threw him out the house, and that's when the mother got mad, and then they broke up because she didn't want him to throw the son out the house, and it was just a whole bunch oh. of dysfunction. Wow, yeah. And, you know, and, and, and where we go from is, who do you talk to in the black community? Mm. I mean, we don't have a lot of psychologists, you know. We don't, we don't have anywhere to go and say, you know what, I'm going through some stuff right now. Mm -hmm. Who can I talk to? Right. A lot of the people who need to talk don't have the financial. Right. Because uh, we don't have resource to, centers to for this. Goat. Mm -hmm. I mean, dealing with this racism. And that's another mm -hmm. thing. We don't want to talk about how this racism really affects us. Mm -hmm. I mean, those police officers were affected by the fact that you work for a department that already hates your people. Mm -hmm. You got to go to work every day in the midst of that. And and I know some police officers. They're good people, and, you know, but they do have a certain disdain for their own people in a sense because they didn't dealt with so much and seen so much. And they're like, you know, the kids don't want to learn and this and that. And they got a lot of gripes about our community. And, you know, some of them will deal with it and, and they want to fix things. But some of them are just angry. Mm -hmm. And I'm tired of black folk. I'm tired of the way we act. And I think what happened was those guys just snapped. They went to pepper spray that young man, and he, he juked out of the way and the pepper sprayed each other. And they were like, they just snapped. And they were like, I'm tired of these young black boys think they are. And 
they and you wouldn't know them from from the white cops. Mm-hmm. And, right. And that's the tragedy that's of policing. Nice. Policing in America is a sick venture. Mm-hmm. And we gonna have to figure this out. We got all these black police chiefs. Yeah. What are they doing? These young men come in. You could be a police officer at what eighteen? Yes, yeah, sir. That's My correct. God, that's at that's 18. still a child. Mm-hmm. And you got a gun. Mm-hmm. You start off at eighteen. You didn't see a lot by twenty eight. Mm-hmm. You're and, right. And you gonna be a little jaded because mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes I'm jaded in my behavior of my people. I'm like, my goodness, what are we doing? Ah, uh, that's true. Just imagine you got a gun and you got the authority to do whatever you want. With people. Mm-hmm. You're going to lose it sometime. So my thing is, we're going to have to deal with this. The, the George Floyd Act should have been passed. Agreed. You know, they sat on this thing for four years now. And, and oh, come on now. And after seeing that, you would have thought that, hey, oh, man. So, I mean, they mm-hmm. killed George Floyd like it was out on a plantation somewhere. Just, yeah. That, that was sickening. It was. And, you know, um, I've been wondering about uh, these states because the Republicans keep bringing it up. No, you need to leave it to the state. No, no, we don't need a federal law. We need need to leave it to the state. And the conversation was uh, uh, regarding the um, uh, George Floyd uh, bill that's in the Senate. And uh, uh, the the host was, was saying... Uh, don't you think that it needs to be passed? And so the, the, the guests, well, no, no. I think it needs to be left up to the states. Well, I think that the states need to get a move on, but when the federal government finally addresses the issue, whatever the state has done, okay, they're going to override it if it's not according, you know, to the bill that's out there. But I, uh, I, I was just wondering if, if uh, the states had the ability, and if they do, then one of the things that, in my opinion, need, needs to be uh, initiated is the ability to sue the police officer, and they have this uh, immunity, which mm-hmm. they should not have. If they're wrong, they're wrong. How can you say it's okay to murder somebody? Well, you have immunity. You can murder whoever you want. Mm -hmm. Well, they've already been doing that. So it's time to stop it. And I think that um, our our people, all of you who are tuned in now, think about uh, calling your uh, police department. Mm -hmm. The number for the Detroit Police Department is a 313 number. 596-1800, 596-1800, 596-1800, 596-1800. And every Thursday, uh, there is a police commission meeting, which generally takes place at um, Grand River, I'm sorry, at uh, 3rd and Michigan Avenue. And that's the uh, main uh, headquarters for the police department. But if you call 596-1800, you can ask uh, the time, the location, Mm -hmm. because one Thursday out of the month, they have the meeting somewhere in the community Mm -hmm. because there are people who work days, of course, who could not attend the regular meetings because they start at 3 p.m. So that's that's one of the things. uh, And and then the other, um, send a letter or email to the United States Senate Mm -hmm. and, and tell them, We need to have those two bills Mm passed, the George Floyd bill and also the voting rights bill. You can put it in two separate emails, Mm -hmm. but it needs to be uh, forwarded and to let people know that you are serious about it. Then they start to think about votes. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's that's House Bill 1280-1280. That's the George Floyd Policing Act. And um, I'm just going, and I think you should call and ask the police departments and these police chiefs, just leave a message, ask them, do they support it? I'd like to know what these police organizations think. I mean, I know you don't want to support something like that because then it's going to put a a greater threshold on you guys. And 
Hey, but you got to. I'm just going to run off three things. I know Tim said we about to get to the break. Oh, but okay. the main three things you need to know is the bill lowers the criminal intent standard from willful to knowing or reckless to convict a law enforcement officer for misconduct in a federal prosecution. Two, it limits qualified immunity. That's the big thing. You know, that qualified immunity, they, they, you know, they feel like, look, I'm a police officer. I don't have to speak on some things. No, you don't have immunity anymore as a defense to liability in a private civil action against law enforcement. And then, number three, it grants administrative subpoena power to the Department of Justice. So that means the Department of Justice can come in and subpoena all the records and everything else about whatever the investigation that the city or the state is doing into whatever action was taken that was unlawful. So, I mean, let's let's definitely get on this, Ms. Bro. Okay. We go into the break. Good. Take it to the break, Ms. Bro. <laughs> all right. I want you all to call somebody. Tell them to tune in, call in and talk to us. 868-4336. And know this, we will be back momentarily. This is Bruce Simpson, your City of Detroit Ombudsman. I am here to address all of your complaints and concerns. If you need assistance regarding city services, please contact my office at 313-224-6000 or contact us via email at ombudsman at detroitmi.gov. This is Bruce Simpson, your City of Detroit Ombudsman. The Detroit Water and Sewerage Department is looking for motivated Detroiters to be a part of our team. We have opportunities for field services technicians, engineers, and customer service specialists with competitive pay and benefits. Make a real difference with the work you do every day. Join other Detroiters who are taking part protecting the pipes where we live, work, and play. Learn more and apply at DetroitMI.gov forward slash jobs. DWSD, working hard for you. It's the These Nuts Show with your host, Butter, and friends. Butter here, magician escape artist, practicing for my show tonight. Come on in, have a seat. All right, everybody, settle. Butter, you're on in five, four, three, two, one. In a few seconds, you gotta be enough to get out of this one. Twist, a little turn, ta-da! It's showtime! It's your old friend Butter here. I may be a nut, but I know to wear my mask. Please welcome my first guest tonight, fitness guru, Wally Wama. Ah, Wally Wama here to tell you to wash your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds so you will stay healthy and strong like me. Almond Cruz here, sliding in with the news. Distance is what we must do to stay away from the... La, 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 chin! and other germs in the air that might be trying to get on you. Social distancing is a wonderful way to see friends. As long as you're six feet apart, you win. Hey there, friends. I wouldn't miss this for the world. It's me, Pumpkin Spice, your healthy girl. Remember, it's important to use your kind hearts and follow the signs to stay healthy and safe at all times. Chica Chimitsky here to say, don't forget the little ones that need you to lead the way. That's how we remember to wash our hands, mask, and social distance today. Morgan Raisin, yes it's me, here to sing about health and safety. We are all here to help get a message out to your grapevine, teaching healthy choices to stay safe all the time. Don't let these guys drive you nuts. Put your mask on first, they'll let you be. And it keeps me safe la, from the la, la, chew. that's trying to get on me. Butter me up, she's right, you know. Thank you, Hallie Cranberry, for joining the show. <laughs> Let's all be nuts about our health. Social distancing, wash your hands frequently, use hand sanitizer, and wear a mask. Practice what we learn to stay away from the la, 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 chew, germ. We're all in this together. Coming soon, the many adventures of these nuts in a theater near you. Feedback. 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 Hi, this is Theo Broughton. And I am the BDM Pinda. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for Feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. 
Encourage others to tune in each Monday on Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, watch WHPR TV Network anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback, feedback, feedback. And we are back. The number is here, 868-4336-868-0351 and 868-0342. Bingo. Uh-huh. We, we have a caller on the line and... In the person of James Ford. We talk about Look. good government, folks. Hey. This guy right here. <laughs> He's yeah. into it. He's a creator yeah. of the Obama weekend that takes place every year, the first weekend of August. Yes, yes uh, Theo and, and, and your crew, I just want to say if you've got people trying to find life on a planet, mm-hmm. miles and millions, millions and years away, they're trying to find life on that planet. Can't we try to sa- find and save lives here right in the city of Detroit? Well, so that, that, I just want to say that the mayor is having a meeting today at 7 o'clock. Okay. He called the mayor's office at 224-3400 and find out how you can get on Zoom and express your concerns. Oh, so it's a Zoom meeting. meeting. Call. Both. Is it both? 312-626-6799. That is the meeting phone number, and they will direct you to prompt as how to speak. Give that number one we more time, Mr. Ford. Slow down, slow down, Mr. Ford. Give okay. the number one more time that they can call to get in on the meeting. 312-626-6799. And express your concerns about whatever you want. But one of the main concerns now is the blatant red light and uh, flag racing in the city. Mm-hmm. Please call. You cannot sit dormant and do anything. And I'm going to repeat this again. If people are getting together, trying to find light on planets that they don't even know about, well, we can get together and save a life right here in Detroit. That's my concern. God bless you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for calling. Thank you for that information. Yes, Thank indeed. You. Mr. Uh, Ford is a real passionate about that piece. Mm-hmm. And, um, and tomorrow there's a meeting with the mayor at the um, Coleman A. Young Municipal Center, formerly known as the City County Building. And... Uh, the meeting, did he say what time the he meeting He said it was going to be 7, 7 p.m. Right. Okay, so you should uh, be headed down there to get there around 6 because you need to uh, find some place to park. And they tell me that parking is going to be free for that. But uh, if you call 224-3400, they can uh, answer that question for you. Mm-hmm. That's it, the mayor's office. Definitely. And you know, if you want to get involved, because Mr. Ford does a lot of good work. He's over on the east side in the Samaritan Center over there on, um, was that, Connor near Warren. Uh, give him a call. His number is 586-918-3061. Right now, as the BD would say, you're supposed to always have that pen and paper available when you're watching feedback. <laughs> so, write this number down, Brother James Ford. Obama weekend. He's putting together the piece on dealing with all of these red lights and let's we gotta come up with a solution. So the number is five eight six nine one eight three zero six one. Call him up and see how you can get involved. Mm-hmm. And that's the key. You know, everybody mm-hmm. gotta get involved and work. And I was just thinking, Miss Bro, we need some proxy warriors out here. Mm-hmm. We got all these organizations. And, you know, everybody can't be out here getting out here marching and showing up to all these events. So you get your proxy warrior out there. And we could deputize like 100 people for every what? Well, let's say 1,000 people, every 100,000 people in the city. Then you got 6,000 proxy warriors out there. They get out there and do the work. They show up at these meetings. They go to the events. They let you know. And that's how we can do We can start something a little different, Ms. Broden. Because I think her research is like proxy warriors. Mm-hmm. You end up going, you go to all. Miss Brown don't miss them board of education meetings. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you right now. 
And she gets out there and she in front of that mic letting them know, y'all better do better. Between her and Helen Moore, they catch it over there. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> education beats. And they, I'm just saying, Ms. Brown, y'all like proxy warriors for all the folks that can't get out. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, they also have the uh, ability for people to call on the phone and ask questions at the, the board meeting, too. Oh, okay. So, mm-hmm. And, uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it's important to participate in what's going on in your community around you, you know. And uh, I, I just try to encourage as, as many people as I come in contact with mm-hmm. to participate. Because that's what makes a difference. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's already been reported a few times that then when pressure is, is applied through the uh, letters, through the calling, through the walking, through the marching, et cetera, uh, things do change. So we need to continue. That. You know, but I, I think the main thing is you need somebody to consolidate all of that. You know, you can do stuff as an individual, but, you know, if you can get an organization to consolidate all that energy and direct people on what they have to do, that will be easy. And then if some people are deputized to be the ones to do it, then they know that's their job. It's like being a precinct delegate. You mm-hmm. know you got your job. But we can't mm-hmm. have the city just tell us well, you can only have six people over here representing everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Right, right. We can say, look, man, we're going to put together our old team of folks mm-hmm. along with the precinct delegates. They are like proxy warriors for you as well. Those are elected proxy warriors. And then you can have, you know, the deputized ones. In her research, you know, we're trying to bring all these groups together. That's why we have so many people on that are doing good things. Because we're trying to pull all this energy together. Because it's disjointed, Miss Broughton. This city is huge. And it's got a lot of people that care. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, it's like they don't know one another sometimes. Mm-hmm. One hand, the left hand don't know what the right hand is doing. <laughs> you know? It's, it, it's hard. It's hard to get yeah. any, you know, traction. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's that's really true. You know, um, there there are black clubs mm-hmm. and uh, black club associations. Uh, there's there's the uh, teachers. The teachers have a, a union, mm-hmm. and uh, for those who are related or connected in some way to school teachers unions. You need to talk with them, mm-hmm. and and they can tell you some of the things that are going on, and you need to uh, write to the school board to let them know that you are concerned. Maybe you're not at the meeting, but you are concerned about what's going on in the system, mm-hmm. and that we need the vocational classes back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you get involved, like the research adopted Barton Elementary. And Ms. Broden has been doing quite a bit of work over there. Mm-hmm. Not to mention some outside work. She got the school board to realize you had a tree that was hanging over one side of the school for the longest. <laughs> Ms. Broden got there, made some call, went down to some school board meeting. <laughs> they cut that big old branch off yeah. because, Ms. Broden, you got involved mm-hmm. and you care. Mm-hmm. And then you work at it. You know? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> it takes work to get this stuff done. It, it does, it does. And then a- as you participate and see things change, no matter how big or small the things that change, it, it makes you feel uh, success, mm-hmm. you know, that, that you're making changes. And it was just so serious about that particular tree that was leaning over the classroom of the little ones Mm -hmm. and nobody knows when a tree is going to fall exactly and with all these storms we've been having right exactly and you don't know if it does fall will will it just hurt the building or will it crash through and hurt the children will it kill the children you know it it just had to go so anyway i'm i'm uh, uh, proud that uh, we have been able to accomplish that is one of the things that we accomplished. You know? Indeed, indeed. Mm-hmm. And folks, call on in. And, you know, we had so many people call, check in. You know, we were giving out them flashcards. <laughs> the mm-hmm. phone was jumping off the uh, hook. Uh-huh, but, uh, uh-huh. but I will say this. So mm-hmm. Shout out to my peoples out there at the airport. We I had some cleaners come up to me and say, you Mark Cummings? I said, yeah, I saw your show. I like feedback. 
<laughs> and I'm like, well, you know what? You know, let us know. And he said, I want to come on the show. I said, well, let me know what you're doing. We might have you on the show. Mm-hmm. People want to get involved. And, you know, we all like seeing each other on TV. We <laughs> 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 real about this. And it just, you know, when you know you got a show that, that reaches out to everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, not just the superstars and the popular folks, but to the citizens. Then you know that they, you know, people care over there. I want to mm-hmm. be on some feedback because I got a few things to say. And that's what is this really is all about, you know. It's just being connecting the people to the city because you don't never know who watching. You don't never know what everybody doing. Everybody want to be a part of something. And they want to know what's going on, Ms. Bro. And you have put this vehicle out here. For over 20 years, for people mm-hmm. to come out and tell the world what they're doing. Not just the mm-hmm. city of Detroit, folks. Right. The entire world gets to see this mm-hmm. show. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Right. We, we had um, a lady f- uh, from uh, Great Britain on with us. Oh, She's okay. an African uh, lady. And uh, we had a, a gentleman uh, from uh, Zambia, uh, Africa, mm-hmm. on with us. And they were physically here, not on the phone. They, mm-hmm. they were physically here in the studio. And uh, we're, we're, we're proud of, of the different things that we have uh, had and been able to present. Mm-hmm. With, you, know, you know, even Charlie Langton has been on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It so said, brought I'm a little still, controversy to the airway. Right, right. <laughs> okay, we got another call here. Let's see who this is. All right. Let's see. You on feedback with Miss Theo Bro Mark Cummings? Who am I speaking with this morning? Hello. Okay. Looks like um the caller um hello. Looks like we didn't lost the caller then. Or they forgot they were on the phone. Mm. One of the two. Mm-hmm. All right. So there it is, folks. You know, call on in, check in with us, and uh, let us know what's happening, what's mm-hmm. going on, and uh, what's going on in your community. Right, you know, right. Is there something going on in our own community? Is it look like they're trying to call back again, Miss Bro? Let's okay. get them this time. Let's see if we can get them this time. Okay. Your feedback with Theo Bro and Mark Cummings. How we doing this morning? Happy Monday. All right. They're not Four, getting three, through then. So and there it is. Mm. Okay. They keep bouncing off and popping back up. So yeah. there it is, folks. Today's is 4336. Yes, that's the 4336. It's not coming through. Yeah. Let's see. I don't my, know what we're the problem looking for. Uh, my cow from Connecticut to uh, call in on 868 mm-hmm. that's, that's the number. We, we don't want them to block that out. Yeah. Okay. Now let's see. We got another caller. It looks like they called on a different line. They must have heard you. Oh, they okay. That line up. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. This is a caller. We missed you last time, caller. Who are we speaking with? The mayor's meeting is today. Oh, that's Mr. Ford again. Okay. Oh, today. today. Monday, Tomorrow. January 30th. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. God bless. Yes, sir. Yes, All sir. Right. Got it. All right. Well, you got him going there, Mr. Ford. Let's see. We got another caller on the line on the. Our 0342 line. Oh, okay. It's 0351. There she is. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Monday. How are you? Hey, I uh, just signed in, and I wanted to make sure, Theo, that we remind people that they have an opportunity, if they would, go down to the city, county, uh, get there early. It starts at 7. It's mandated for the mayor to be there, who is already ready to distract the community with this jumpstart program when folks are having issues with stolen taxes, misappropriating of um, taxes, and the water shutoffs, and the list goes on. So for those that are listening and if they're able, it is free parking. Uh, it starts at 7, get there way early so you can get in where you fit in and uh, definitely get your concerns addressed. Uh, if we can, we'll pray. <laughs> now, you going to be you down there tonight, Sister Sylvia? You can go on Zoom as well, and uh, there's a number that you can call. But, I, of course, I don't have it in front of me, so I have to call back with it. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. Mr. Ford had left that number earlier. That, oh, that, Coolio, good job, good right. job. Mm-hmm. But uh, are you going to be there tonight? 
Yeah, yeah, we're going to get there early, y'all. You know, me and Lori, we've been pumping it up. I've been blasting it all over Facebook and making it an issue that people that that are really hurting and struggling because of these draconian policies that are set in place to take care of corporate greed and never the people's needs. Mm. See, that's one of them proxy warriors out there, mm-hmm. folks, Sister Sylvia. She out there representing the people and getting it done. So if you see her today, go on in there and show us some love. Mm-hmm. And tell her <laughs> you'd Lord, like to, to join her research. I'm supposed to be recognizing my, uh, my voice. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, you know, it ain't easy being a resident poet. And you know? a rebel, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for taking my call. I'll continue to listen, y'all. Oh, you're yes, welcome. <laughs> Oh, yes, man. indeed. No, I, that, that's what I'm talking about, Miss Bro. These are people that I, I mean, they vested in the community. You know, they've been here a long time, and they care about what goes on and how it goes on. So that, I like to call them proxy warriors. That's my name for them now. They, they, mm-hmm. they the proxy for the people. You know, everybody can't do this work. It ain't easy when you care like this. Going to meetings and. Showing love and passing out petitions and all that. That's a lot of work. <laughs> mm, and, and yes, yes. And, uh, it is. Ain't nobody, ain't too many people getting checks for this stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Right. And then there there are mailings that have to be done. And uh, all candidates don't pay a company to do the mailing for them. Some of them have their uh, team members, their campaign you know, members, to, uh, to sit around and um, stuff envelopes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, and, and seal them. Then you have to separate them by zip code. And, and then you get um, uh, sleeves from the post office, and you put them in their separate sleeves, organized, and you take them back to the uh, post office. So then they can be sent out mm-hmm. because you have done the work of the postal employees. And you by doing that, you cut down some of the cost on your, you know, your political campaign. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of work, folks. And uh, we're working on a few things. You know, we just we could we everybody could use a nice cash infusion for the organizations mm-hmm. so we can do more out here so we got to get we looking for some people out here that can write some grants folks if you're a grant writer out there you know give us a call holler at um hood research what's the number for the research again miss bro area code 248 234 2371 again the hood research telephone number is area code 248 234 234-2371. Indeed. Because mm-hmm. um, we keep we want to get all the funds out there that we can get because mm-hmm. we need them to keep yeah. doing good things. We just did a big thing with the um, neighborhood. Oh, yeah. With the, you get the, the light rain. out front and you had the, no. knee, with your, what the, was the solar light. Mm-hmm. Right. The rain doorbell. So, mm-hmm. I mean, um, this stuff costs money, folks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dormant grass seeding and edging of the lawn. Because this year, uh, we are concerned about curb appeal. Curb appeal improves the neighborhood. Whatever block you live on, you want it to be neat. And somebody was complaining uh, um, um, about yards not being edged. And, and the example was, it's like a man going to the barbershop, having a haircut and not getting a line. That's what you call it, a line. <laughs> right, right. right. So, so that this bit it included, you know, and and this year you'll hear me talk about curb appeal, just interjecting it here yes, and there, because it's important, and it it always makes me think about the uh, broken, what was the broken window? Yeah, the broken windows thing, right? Broken, yeah. Where is one broken, broken window? Window. You gonna have other ones, and then yeah. it just spreads, and oh my goodness! And it's it's. <laughs> Um, and, you know what they talk about crime being a uh, opportunity, crime of opportunity. Anyway, when you have a a structure like that, mm-hmm. and children are on their way to school, or a young lady may be on her way to work or home from work, uh, you can really get snatched up into one of those places. Mm-hmm. So, 
We want to uh, also report windows broken, houses not boarded up, or boards that have come down off of windows, mm -hmm. because you find that sometimes as well. A place has been boarded up, and for whatever reason, uh, the board is, is off, mm -hmm. taken off, knocked off, whatever. So we want to uh, call the uh, city of Detroit, tell them you want the emergency demolition line, mm -hmm. not just a line to talk to somebody about setting up an opportunity to go out and investigate. Mm -hmm. And then you, you try and find out uh, the owner. Then it just gets so involved and it takes forever. And, and, and no, you, get I think knowing down. your precinct delegate means a lot too. Because when I was a precinct delegate, people would call about somebody left their garbage can out too long or something. They have a liaison at the police department that handles those type of concerns. And you could call them up and they're like, okay, we'll look into it. And even the police department is a part of the beautification in the cities. I don't think a lot of people know that. Because mm -hmm. I didn't know that mm -hmm. until I became a precinct delegate. Right. And then you call down there and they say, okay, we'll look into whatever. And you're like, people leaving a lot of garbage out front of their homes or something. And they'll look into that. Mm -hmm. So the main, I think that's another no. thing. If you're a precinct delegate, your citizens should know your phone number. You know, exactly. I mean, I mean, you get yeah. them cards from your councilman all the time with all the agencies on them and the numbers. And I know a lot of times we throw them in the garbage. Like, mm -hmm. put that on your refrigerator. Hold on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I know I got the mag. I got mine on my refrigerator. So, mm -hmm. like you said, the department numbers are right there. Right. Or you can even tape it inside of a cabinet uh, door, mm -hmm. you know. Yep. Uh, either one or both of those. And, you know, there, there are some things by uh, policy code ordinance that uh, over the years had been put in place and then kind of left by the wayside. And uh, one of them, interestingly enough, we had about 3,000 wire trash baskets throughout the city. And I'm told that be because of uh, uh, budgetary uh, stress and strain, they were taken up. Wow. And then people said, well, well, wait now. The um, the basket should be out, out there. And you think about it, if the basket is there and it's being filled with trash, now you have to pay someone, which is from DPW, mm -hmm. Detroit Public Works, uh, to go around and empty those baskets. Now someone has to get paid for that. And uh, then you, you have the... Uh, wear and tear on a truck, oil, uh, maintenance, you know, all, all of that mm -hmm. that you have to pay for. So it, it was um, a fair size, you know, meal. So that was discontinued. Another thing that happened, for every, I think it's five years, the trees throughout the city were supposed to be pruned. Mm -hmm. And that is what keeps the concrete, uh, blocks on the sidewalk level mm, otherwise roots, right. right when the roots are looking for water they push up anything in the way water is extremely strong and and then we have those uh, grates in the ground by the curb and those get vacuumed out say every seven years mm -hmm. then every five years the street lights are supposed to be changed and washed, you know. So there are a number of things that uh, go into keeping a city uh, where you have good curb appeal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, this year we will be talking about that, you know, more and more. Definitely, definitely, mm -hmm. without a doubt. Well, mm -hmm. we hopefully, we haven't seen them yet, hopefully you the Bishop Russell Schaller make it on down. I got a guy first T-shirt for him. Mm -hmm. Come on for this 10 o'clock hour at the top of the hour. Mm -hmm. I got one for Sister Renee down here at the station. Got the guy first one for you. And uh, I think I got one more I'm going to get a Sister Sylvia out there because she always moving and shaking. <laughs> yeah, with the Sister Resident <coughs> Poet. That would be a nice gift for her. So, mm -hmm. you know, just trying to. 
spread the love. Now, I know in yeah. a couple of weeks we're going to have them folks from Urban Intellectuals on, on mm -hmm. the phone call from Chicago with the flashcards. Right. For the people that we receive the flashcards, call in and, you know, give us some feedback. That's what the show is called. Let us know what you think about the flashcards. Have you used them with your children a little? Have you used them for yourself? Have you used them in the classroom? Let us know, you know, what you think about them flashcards. Just give us an idea. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. if you can, call in on the next half of the show. Right. And tell us, you know, yeah, I got this such and such flashcard. Mm -hmm. You know, I liked it. Because uh, that's what's happening. Because I know you said you sent one to your son in California. The yes. one we had with the, uh, mm -hmm. the Latin. Right, the right. And, uh, yeah, there's a large population of that in California. Indeed. And uh, also... Uh, there, there was a um, uh, uh, request for uh, Lieutenant Colonel Milburn. He's going to be coming on with us. He's at Tuskegee Ooh, Airmen. Okay. And he's going to tell us the uh, latest update on getting Benjamin Davis Aerospace School back in the city of Detroit where That's it belongs be show. on the grounds of the airport. Uh, the Detroit City Airport is now known as the Coleman Young Municipal, no, the Coleman A. Young International Airport. I love it. Tim said we got to go to break. I can hear oh. him in there shuffling now like, oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for us to take a pause for the cause, and we'll be back momentarily. This is Bruce Simpson, your City of Detroit Ombudsman. I am here to address all of your complaints and concerns. If you need assistance regarding city services, please contact my office at 313-224-6000 or contact us via email at ombudsman at detroitmi.gov. This is Bruce Simpson, your City of Detroit Ombudsman. It's the These Nuts Show with your host Butter and Friends. Butter here, magician escape artist, practicing for my show tonight. Come on in, have a seat. All right, everybody, show Butter, you're on in five, four, three, two, one. Come on, a few seconds. You gotta be enough to get out of this one. Twist, a little turn, ta-da! It's showtime. It's your old friend Butter here. I may be a nut, but I know to wear my mask. Please welcome my first guest tonight, fitness guru, Wally Walmart. Ah, Wally Walmart here to tell you to wash your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds so you will stay healthy and strong like me. Almond Cruz here, sliding in with the news. Distance is what we must do to stay away from the la, 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 chin and other germs in the air that might be trying to get on you. Social distancing is a wonderful way to see friends. As long as you're six feet apart, you win. Hey there, friends. I wouldn't miss this for the world. It's me, Pumpkin Spice, your healthy girl. Remember, it's important to use your kind hearts and follow the signs to stay healthy and safe at all times. Chica Chimitsky here to say, don't forget the little ones that need you to lead the way. That's how we remember to wash our hands, Mask and social distance today. Morgan Raisin, yes, it's me, here to sing about health and safety. We are all here to help get a message out to your grapevine, teaching healthy choices to stay safe all the time. Don't let these guys drive you nuts. Put your mask on first, they'll let you be. And it keeps me safe la, from the. La, la, chew. That's trying to get on me. Butter me up. She's right, you know. Thank you, Hallie Cranberry, for joining the show. <laughs> Let's all be nuts about our health. Social distancing, wash your hands frequently, use hand sanitizer, and wear a mask. Practice what we learn to stay away from the ha uh, ha uh, uh, chew germ. We're all in this together. Coming soon, the many adventures of these nuts in a theater near you. You're watching WHPS, Highland Park, Detroit. WGPR Detroit HD2. Feedback. Feedback. 
Feedback. Hi, this is Theo Brota. And I am the BDM Pinda. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for Feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. Encourage others to tune in each Monday on... Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, watch WHPR TV Network anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback, feedback, feedback. And take us along with you. You know, there's a way to download, what is it called, TV 33 On Demand? Yes. That's it? It's oh, WHPR okay. TV. WHPR. Let me see. I got it TV on my phone here. Th- wait a minute. <laughs> Where's the app here? Yeah, right yeah we want to we wanna share that so people know how to take us along with them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And trust me, folks, you just go to YouTube. And pulled out all the shows. There's so many great oh, shows that come on down here. Mm-hmm, I right. love it. Mm-hmm. It's uh, WHPR. That's it. Just WHPR. WHPR. Mm-hmm. Not on yeah. demand? No. It's just, oh, just, just WHPR. WHPR. Okay, That's cool. The app. And, That's the um, app. And take us along yeah. with you. Yeah. And then at your leisure, you can go to YouTube mm-hmm. and uh, put in feedback. Yep. yep. There it is. Right? Feedback? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I see the app now. Is, we we should name name. It might be best to just go to YouTube. The app say go on fishing. <laughs> go on fishing. We should, we should, uh, uh, um, we should have named the show Hood Research. But anyway, here we are. Um, I, I was about to, to, to uh, share something. We talked about the broken uh, window. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was uh that uh what was that guy? The LA police chief started that. Then he moved to New York with that. That was that was the guy that was, you know, they was using that to stop and frisk and all that that's why, mm-hmm. you know, it got a bad connotation behind it. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. You make sense, you know, if you got broken windows, you saying fix them. Mm-hmm. Board them up. Right. And and that's the thing, you know, don't go over there after the people in the neighborhood and treat them like they scum or something. Mm-hmm. Christ. Yeah. Right. Bloomberg was the mayor then. That's right. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness! I tell you, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Mm-hmm. But it is what it is. Yeah. We got to be better. Get down yeah, into that thing today. That um, that meeting, seven right. o'clock, folks. Right. At the Comanay Young Municipal Center, also uh, formerly known as the City County Building, on uh, Two Wilwood Avenue, right there on the corner of Woodward and Jefferson. Now everybody, uh, it, we cannot assume that everybody knows that. Mm-hmm. So we just try and give all the details just in case. That's right. There are some who are not familiar. Mm-hmm. You and, know. and that's important. And I'm reading mm-hmm. this book right now. I had mentioned it on the way in, Ms. Bro. Mm-hmm. Segregation by Design, folks. Mm-hmm. Local Politics and Inequality in America's Cities by uh, Jessica Tromstein. T R O U N S T I N E. And uh, I read like the first chapter. And I mean, we we really don't realize how these cities have been doing this since like the early 1900s, folks. Mm. <laughs> this, is, this is not really new. Mm-hmm. It's setting up these policies. And even when they were putting up the public housing, they had public housing for the white people and public housing for the black people. Really? So, yeah. So mm. it's, it's always been. Segregation. Oh, and, yeah. and it's almost like we can't get out of this this mindset, Miss Broden. It's like, you know, you pass Brown versus Board of Education, and the schools are more segregated now than they yeah, were back then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, now, uh, Professor Griggs said, um, how did he put that? He, he was quoting someone. If you teach our children uh, bad, they will make bad decisions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I hope that that's, let's see if that's word for word. Yeah, if you, if you teach our children wrong, they'll make wrong decisions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what, that's one of the reasons why I feel the importance of going to the school board meeting. That's right. To advocate for the children who can't advocate for themselves. That's right. You know, and uh, I, I, uh, I think that... Um, it's it's very important for our people to know how the city works. Mo. 
we got the assessment issue. And we have uh, heard that the mayor is going to make sure that the assessments of the property go up. <laughs> I suppose tonight he'll address that as well. But in the meantime, if your property is the assessment increases and you are expecting to make a, 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 uh, a good amount of money by selling your property, know that that's the only time the assessment is important. <laughs> So, you know, <laughs> if you're going to sell it and they say uh, you can get 100000 but if it's assessed at 100000 then you you got to pay higher property taxes. Mm -hmm. And usually the assessment value is usually about half of what the value of right, the home is. Right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is anything paying more is is costly. Because you got to figure out, where am I getting all this extra money from? We already paid a $250 fee just to have our garbage picked up. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kwame Kilpatrick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. And it's like, then you want to add all these extra assessments to the property taxes. We got all of these mm -hmm. doggone bond issues that still sitting there that we paying for mm -hmm. on our property taxes. It's getting, it's getting back to the point where it's getting too expensive. And, you know, it's mainly elderly citizens that own these homes and then these companies that don't pay their taxes, they get to rent out the folks, and then they get away with it when the houses fall into disrepair and they mm -hmm. go hide in whatever country they're from or whatever. Mm -hmm. And this is why the city is not getting the property taxes they need. Mm -hmm. So they overtax us, though those who do pay. And then, you know, they haven't paid us back for the over-assessments and the over-taxation of the early 2000s. Now they want to raise it, Miss Broden? It's just, I mean, you just feel like you're just getting taken advantage of. Yes, yes, <laughs> the most definitely. You know, so uh, we, we want to uh, let you know that that's an issue that, that should be addressed this evening. Mm -hmm. Hopefully there will be a time for questions and answers. Uh, uh, this evening, the meeting starts at 7 p.m. It's with the mayor. So... Um, I, I just, I don't know, I, ju I just think that uh, there's a definite disservice. But one of the things I want to mention that if the house is owned by a parent, grandparent, and it passes down to the next generation, which would be the children, know this, that whatever the property taxes are, if that piece of um, property is paid for and is free and clear, mm -hmm. then you divide up the property tax amount by 12. And that's what your rent should be every month. Hmm. Whatever it, you know, whatever it is. And, and if you uh, get accustomed to setting that aside, then you know that your um, property taxes, taxes will always be paid and clear and you will have some place to live. Well, I mean, that's, I mean, <laughs> I know one thing, it's just expensive to live in Detroit. It's sad. I mean, property yeah, taxes sure. go up. They didn't raise the insurance. I called out my insurance agent about my mother's home, and the guy said, well, the reason it's going up because the material to fix the home didn't go on up. <laughs> so, <laughs> but if you're not fixing anything, <laughs> right. the house is just sitting there. How do they come up with that excuse? Uh, because they claim it would burn to the ground. It would cost three hundred thousand now, oh. where it was two hundred sixty. You know, good dog on where they ain't gonna cut nobody no three hundred thousand dollar check no. for no home in Detroit. No, Get that's out a here. that's that's an insurance issue, not a property tax mm -hmm. issue. And they just hitting us up with more and more fees, insurance fee, the taxes mm -hmm. are high. And, and it's like I said, there's so many senior citizens in the city. Right, and that's a part of gentrification. That's exactly when, what when it you is. continue increasing, 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 <laughs> you know, property tax, groceries, just all kinds of things I increasing. Just sit back for a while. <laughs> oh <Ooh>, Lord, <sighs> this is why you call into a show like this because mm -hmm. you can vent a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's why I like being old, because sometimes you just want to get stuff off your chest. Mm -hmm. You're just tired of getting right. fooled around with and think they don't know nothing, and people talk to you all funny, and mm -hmm. you just get tired of that stuff. 
you know, let's treat let's treat each other with some respect. Respect yourself. We got to get these shirts out. We got to wear them on the show one, mm-hmm. one time, Miss mm-hmm. Bro, so everybody can see yeah. the beautiful Respect Yourself shirts you had made to give out to all the new members of Hood Research. So come on in this year. It's 31st year. It's a big year for us. We're going to have a big function somewhere this year celebrating. Yes, we started to work on that. Off. Well, from last year, actually, we've been working on, mm-hmm. on that. Yeah. So it should be it should be a lot of fun mm-hmm. getting things done. Right. Yes, indeed. Mm-hmm. Ah. So, what we got? Good. We got twenty more minutes, Miss Broden. Okay. What uh, you got on your mind? Let's see. I like the affirmation. Oh, you like, and, you like uh, that affirmation? Yes. Is uh, what day is February the tenth? The one. Let's see. Uh, let's, let's see, see what we got for February the tenth. I think that's a Saturday this year. Oh, okay. Because well. I know the thirteenth is our show. Oh, okay. So that's oh, a Monday. That's, so that's okay. a, let's see. Two, that's a Friday. Oh, okay. That's a Friday. Well, well, we can we can read about that then, since it's not a Monday. Mm. And guess whose birthday comes on February the tenth? It was February tenth. Mm-hmm. It's a lady. Okay. And she's a singer. Okay, okay. Do we announce her? So we, she can know? She mm-hmm. getting that love? <laughs> Shoot. Let's see. That we, would be. Ooh. Oh, she going to like this. She, she, she really going to like February 10th. She should be in there. She, she going to like this. 1927, folks. Mm-hmm. Born in Laurel, Mississippi. Mm-hmm. Mary Leontine Price. Grammy Award winning opera diva. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed, folks. Mm-hmm. We have had some mm-hmm. heavy hitters mm-hmm. out here. Mm-hmm. Who, who else is? is oh, up? my goodness. It's, it's almost like it's a whole bunch of musical love on February uh-huh. It's a, a music vibe. Tell, that's right. Roberta Flack. That's right. <laughs> she mm-hmm. was born in Asheville, North Carolina in 1939 on February the Mm-hmm. How about that? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Now a lot That's of people good. don't remember this guy. I remember him though. Ooh. Ron Brown. He was the first African American chairman of the Democratic National Committee. Mm-hmm. A lot of people remember he died in a mysterious plane crash. Plane crash, yeah. And uh, people say that you know it might have been some funny stuff going mm-hmm. on. With that. And uh, folks, we done had a lot of people, once they start doing good, strange things happen to them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we we got to, Lord have mercy. But there were a lot of people on that plane who were into the economic uh, development and other issues for the country. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, hey, things don't just happen. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Let's see, who else we got? We got a lot of people on February 10th. And it's a lot of music. William Chick Webb, the jazz musician, oh, folks, Chick Webb. was born in Baltimore, Maryland on that day hmm. in 1907. Wow. How about that? Mm, mm, mm. Just, mm. just a lot of good people. Let's see who else we got here. 1854, Joseph Charles Price was born in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. He was the first president of Livingstone College. How about that? That was a black school, folks. Livingstone and where is College. it? And where, I Livingstone? think that's in North Carolina. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I wonder if it's still around. I'm going to have hmm. to look into that. Because, you know, we didn't lost so many black colleges yeah. over the years. And uh, it ain't easy keeping them going. That's why I say we need to get more money from the federal government. Because, I mean, you're always complaining that, what was that, what did that guy say that was the owner of the Clippers? He said that black folk wasn't intelligent. He was talking about Magic Johnson. And I always thought that the league should have paid. After that, like, look, I think all y'all teams should put some money into United Negro College Fund every year. If you don't think we that smart, then help us get better. <laughs> we are part of the country. Help mm-hmm. educate us mm-hmm. then, okay? Kick in. Shoot. So, I mean, the basketball players will have to do more. That's another thing. We got to get these celebrities to do more. Come on now, folks. I mean, you fussing around. Like you had this whole thing with Ed Reed talking about Bethune Cookman and the administration and the, the place was dirty and all that. And come on, come on, baby. You don't go on the world wide web telling the world these. We know these schools are struggling, and I, I'm trying to figure out, Miss Broton, how these guys keep 
have the audacity to talk about the black schools when they know they ain't got the funding. But they'll give $2 million to their alma mater. Like the University of Miami needs your $2 million. You give that to the black school. Give that to FAMU. Mm-hmm. It's right down there. Come on now. That's how you do that. Mm-hmm. Or Bethune-Cookman, which is also in Florida. That's how you do that. And then you won't have to be talking about, oh, they ain't got the facilities. Because over the years, it takes time to build these facilities back. And these guys, they, they, they're making good money now. They can do more. We got to work on that, Mr. Mm-hmm. Maybe I agree. we need to go see some folks down there at the Pistons and say, look, we want to put some things to do some things. We got Lewis College of Business back, right? Didn't they reopen Lewis College of Business? I think it got reopened that. That's a black uh, HBCU. We're going to have to have them on the show. That's my next move. I'm getting in touch no, with the okay. people over at Lewis College of Business and find out what's going on. And let's see, who else we got now? Let me see. Let's see. Um, we just rolling here. Uh, <laughs> Let, look up March the 4th. March the 4th. Okay, got you, got you. And then on that, also on the 10th, we got Grace Towns Hamilton. She was Georgia's first African-American female state legislature, born in Atlanta, Georgia in 1907. All right, let's get this mm. March the 4th. March the 4th. Now, who... Shall we say it's March the 4th? I think I know that birthday. Let's see. March 4th. Hmm. Mm-hmm. 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 Look at these cats on here. African American director of the National Science Foundation, Walter Massey, was named the first African American director of the National Science Foundation in 1991. Hmm. Okay, let's see. We got a Robert. You know who that is, Bobby Woolmack. Bobby Woolmack born on that day, 1944. Recording artist born in Cleveland, Ohio. Yes, indeed. Then we got Jerome, Joseph Jerome Ferris, born in 1930. Ninth U.S. Circuit Appellate Judge. He was born in Birmingham, Alabama. A.K.A. Bobby Woolmack. A.K.A. Bobby Bobby Woolmack. Well, Timmy Tim said, get it right. <laughs> 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 yes, indeed. That's my guy. Mm-hmm. Timmy Tim, folks. He one of the best in the business. And let's see who else we got here. Oh, my goodness. 1924, and Isaiah Thornton Montgomery was the founder of the all-black town of Mound Bayou, Mississippi. I wonder if that's still around, Miss Bro. Mound Bayou, Mississippi, all black city. Hmm, interesting. Now, let me see. Eatonville, folks. I went and visited Eatonville down in Florida. It's right outside of Orlando. It is an all-black city, incorporated, got its own post office. <laughs> and it also has the Zora Neale Hurston Museum. Mm. She's she from there. So uh, I'm, I'm telling you, I met the, one of the former mayors down there when I was down there, and uh, he's got a, he had a fish shack. Down there, he called it the fish shack, and uh, he passed away a couple of years ago. But uh, I'm telling you, these are we still have some cities in this country that black folks run, it's theirs, we own the city, okay. And uh, I think we need to find out which few cities we got left, Miss Bro, because um, that's interesting, you know. And on this day, before he got representing this day, now he wasn't born on this day, but he got representing this day, Marcus Garvey, folks. Ah, and, uh, let's yeah. see, he's one of the most powerful Pan African uh-huh. leaders that we've ever had. Now, he was born on August the 17th, 1887, but they got him listed for this day as a representative that we need to know. So, everybody, get you a copy of Affirmation. This is what's happening out there. Somebody can call in if you got a birthday. We got 11 minutes mm-hmm. left. That's right. And, you know, just holler at us, see who you want to see. Let me see. Who do I know who got a birthday? My partner, he born in September, the chef. Mm-hmm. Chef Jeff Tony. He's September the 20th. I'm going to do September the 20th because he's going to be on soon. And uh, let's see what September the 20th we got for us. We got to have the chef down. I wanted him down today because he's doing the Super Bowl platters. But he say he's so busy. We got to get <laughs> everybody so busy out there, folks. I'm telling you. And I get it. It's good to be busy. Ooh, man. 
on that day, September the 20th, they only got one thing listed. The Cosby Show premiered on NBC on that day, back in 1984. Wow, folks, that's a long time ago. Hmm, how about that? And then, of course, it's funny that they got this guy listed on his day. They got John William Coltrane listed on his day. And um, <laughs> one of his aunties was married, Alice Coltrane. One of his aunties. Oh. So, uh, look, I'm telling you folks, it ain't nothing but love out here, Miss Broden. And you got love because you get up every Monday. You come down to WHPR Studios at 160 Victor Street in Highland Park. And from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m., you let people know what's going on in the city. Mm -hmm. You have people, guests come on. You have some of the most influential people in the city of Detroit and beyond. And I'm telling you folks, it ain't easy. Miss Brown been doing this a long time. Show the love. Here go. Now we got a call. We got one. <laughs> Let's see who we got there. Oh, then they gonna then they gonna disappear on me. Come on, folks. Don't be scared. Come on in and say, show the love and thank Miss Broden for all she's been doing all these years. Because uh, it ain't easy producing these shows. You got Timmy Tim, the engineer, been doing it a long time. Get the job done. One of our best, Murray Wright, graduate, 83, best in the business, folks. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's really what it's all about. We all here getting it done. And I thank R.J. Watkins for his beautiful studio. And uh, it's a lot of people down here doing great shows. And check them out. Hit the website up. Hit the YouTube page. Check out some of the shows. Mm -hmm. They got a lot of good stuff on there. And, uh, you're going to enjoy it. So we down to eight minutes. How was the phone call this week, Miss Broughton? Where, where we, where, who'd you have on the phone call? Um, we had a, a, a gentleman who uh, was, was studying or is studying uh, black history mm -hmm. and the origins of, of our people. And it was something interesting about him. He said he was using the King James Version of the Bible to come with the words. That, and I thought that was kind of unusual. Mm -hmm. okay. But um, <clears throat> I thought that uh, if you were going to study uh, black history, you would go to other sources besides the <laughs> King James Version of the Bible. Yeah, well, I, I, and you know, let's just be honest. Most of them folks in there are black folks, and uh, who knows? The name been changed to protect the innocent. I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but you know, we were talking earlier about bloodlines, and the, and the entire book is just about bloodlines. You know, you got the, the people say some people even say with the Rastafarians that Holly Selassie come from the bloodline of Jesus. You know. Mm -hmm. and they hooked him up with the what is it the Queen of Sheba got with Solomon, and uh, it, I mean folks, it's all about the bloodlines, and uh, you know then you got the Noah piece and you know Ham, and I mean good grief, there's so much going on out there. It's, everything is about the bloodlines and uh, the prodigal son, and it's so many stories in there about bloodlines because mm -hmm. that's important. Mm -hmm. You know, the Broden family, the Cummins family, mm -hmm. the Smith family, the Watkins family. These are bloodlines. You want to keep them going, you know. And that's what's important because names mean, they mean a lot, Miss Broden. You know, that, that, it carries a lot to it, you know. So when they know, when they see Broden, they know he ain't playing. You know, your son out there in California getting things done. They know. They know the name all over mm -hmm. the world, for that matter. So that's what it's about, people. And I'm, I'm just proud that I've been a part of a name that goes a long way. And my parents came up from uh, Middlesville, Georgia, and uh, they, they dealt with a lot of foolishness. You know, they they burnt my great grandfather' house down down there. In, um, oh Georgia. my goodness! And uh, you know, to this day, you know, my father was never too you know keen on <laughs> dealing with. Uh, Let's just be honest. Dealing with the Caucasians is just a lot of foolishness. And, but we got to learn. That's why we were looking to have Bishop Russell Charlotte down there. We got to fix this. 
That's the thing. We got to fix this. We got five minutes. Looks like the caller decided they're going to call back in. Let's see if we can get them this time. Five minutes to go. You're on there. You're on feedback. Theo Broden, Mark Cummings. Talk to us. We got five minutes. Good morning. Good morning. I just want to say that I enjoy your show. I watch it all the time. I'm interested in how I can re acquire the almanac that you're reading. Yes, sir. The affirmations. Uh, it's kind of interesting that I've gotten this this old to to thirst for knowledge. Yes, sir. As the old saying goes, you're never too old to learn. Mm -hmm. And that is true. And I'd like to acquire that uh, almanac. If you can tell me how I could do so. Well, you know, you can go on Amazon and do all that stuff. But this one I'm going to do for you. Because I know it's easier when somebody come right to you. I'm going to order the book. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm going to have it sent to me. Then I'm going to get it to you. Take my number down right now. So what's your name? My name is Bob. Brother Bob, take this number down. Take Mark Cummings. That's me. Okay. And my number is 313. Okay. 510. zero. Okay. 1250. 1250. Got it. And call me after the show. Call me about, I guess, 1130 today. And I'll, you know, I'll get you information. And I'm going to order the book and get it to you. Because you're right. This is an incredible book, folks. 366 Days of American History. Because, I mean, let's just be honest. We Americans. They don't want to treat us like Americans. But we Americans. And we, we made this country what it is. I mean, mm -hmm. just the jazz music alone. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Blues, jazz. We make this country fun. Now, this is a boring country without us. <laughs> what would they do without black folk? <laughs> Let's just be honest. So, you know, we got to keep this love flowing and let them know it's the love. I got my guy first shirt on, and um, I'm impressed. And Brother Bob, call me. Thanks for watching the show. That's what we like. We like the listeners to check in and just say we enjoy the show. And we appreciate well, thank you. that. So give me a call today, and we're going to hook that up for you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Mm -hmm. Have a good day. That's good. Yes, oh, indeed. thank you. That's good. Miss Broden, shut it down. We yes. got two minutes. Well, it, it has been, I think, a um, uh, revealing uh, day. And it was a lot of information that has been shared, and uh, particularly the meeting tonight with the mayor at the Combe Young um, Municipal uh, Center on Woodward and Jefferson. And it starts at 7 p.m. You should be there at, at 6. If you need a number for the uh, Zoom call, uh, which is in addition to the in-house meeting, just call 224-3400, 224-3400. Also, uh, we have uh, uh, talk, talked about the school and the importance of participating at the school board meetings and making sure that they know that you are aware of what they're doing or what they're not doing uh, so they can clean up their exit. So, uh, you see that, I think, it's, I, I thought, or some others. Um, that's what, that's what I, I, that I just about sums to, it up. Yeah. Just take us all home. Yeah, but I want to, <laughs> to tell people that it's not necessary for you to know everything. What is necessary is for you to know how to find what you need when you need it. And we at Hood Research seek out as much information as we can to share with you and encourage you to share with us. And we want you to know our email is contact at hoodresearch.org. The telephone number, once again, is 248-234-2371. That's 248-234-2371. 2371. So join us again next Monday right here at 9 a.m. And for a conference call on the Saturday, Google Hood Research and you can get the contact numbers to be on with us between the hours of 3 and 6 p.m. Peace. Feedback. Feedback. Feedback.
Hi, this is Theo Groton. And I am the BDM Pina. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. Encourage others to tune in each Monday on Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, watch WHPR TV Network anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback, feedback, feedback.